Okay, Kasha is going to talk on. Okay, what what was the general title of your? I think talk? Uh, well, I mean, I think you asked me to talk about uh, to give some kind of introduction into the yes. intersymplectic okay. duality. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, well, I mean, so this the subject of symplectic duality is a kind of very popular subject in the last maybe. Can you switch on your video? Uh, I'm. Uh, I, 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 I'm. I was trying to share screen. And is it does it is it working or not? Yeah, it works. Hmm? Okay. It works. Пока он просто показывает, что у тебя видео не включено. Экран показывает. Сейчас, Паша, наверное, надо всем, чтобы показывало именно вот эту. No, uh, no, no. I, 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 I press and share screen, and it's supposed to work. Yes, uh, but when we see your shared screen, we don't see you. But, but, uh, but, you but don't I, I think you're not, you're not supposed to see me. Ask to see you, but. No, no, but, but uh, why, why do you want to see me? <laughs> I don't know. Ну, 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 потому что легче, когда ты видишь докладчика, легче понимать. Но Поэтому это, тебе надо это, видео включить, это, а Игорю выключить. Давайте, во-первых, не будем говорить по-русски. Ну, я же тебе говорю только. Ну, все равно, нет. Как бы, так сказать, вслух не надо произносить по-русски ничего. Окей, но ты видишь мой screen или нет? Да, мы видим. Окей, я имею в виду, если ты хочешь видео on, то... I can do this, but I'm not sure. I think if I'm sharing screen, you will not see me anyhow. No, uh, unless you have two uh, laptops. Two. I do have two laptops, but somehow you, uh, it's kind of. But uh, but I think if I if I if I switch both of them, there will be some problems with sound. Please, if I switch both them at the same room, then you will have problems with sound. Uh, so I, I I can switch the video on in the end when if you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've attended right, only like 20, uh, uh, 20 Zoom talks in, in, in the last two weeks, and I think that in, always somehow the video of the speaker was switched off. Uh, okay, uh, so, um, so so the subject is somehow um, very popular maybe in the last 10, 15 years, uh, uh, but it's a kind of... Uh, ill-defined subject, so it's not it's not really clear. I mean, it's, it's not very easy to sort of draw some lines and borders what it is actually about. So um, instead of trying to give you some kind of really general overview, I'm, I, will, I will maybe talk just about some examples and introduce some notions. And um, uh, and I don't know if. This is one talk or two talks because somehow, in principle, it's a it's a it's a pretty long subject. So I will try to explain something today, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And also, the talk will be kind of mathematic. I mean, uh, the talk will be mathematical, but uh, uh, I'll maybe at some point, very very briefly mention that relation to physics. Um, and uh, 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 but so. I will mention it, but uh, the rule will be that I'm not going to answer any questions about physics so, because I'm not in a position to, to, uh, to answer any questions. And uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you what kind of what kind of uh, part of quantum of supersymmetric quantum field theory this is related to. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, well uh, let me start with a slogan. So I'm going to define the notion of. Uh, uh, symplectic uh, 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 resolution. And actually, do you see what I'm writing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to, um, um, before I, I explain what this is, I'm going to format a slogan, which is due to uh, Andrei Okonkov. And this is that uh, symplectic resolutions are Lie algebras of 21st century. And so, uh, uh, so 
part of what I'm going to say will be about uh, sort of giving a hint of what this might mean and wh why, is, why is he saying that. Although I would like to be in some, to at least for the time being, to live in some context which is slightly more general. Let me like, first start with the notion of uh, symplectic singularity and then we'll talk about symplectic resolution, symplectic singularities. This, I'm going to define this notion, which is due to Baville. So, well, suppose that we have Y, which is, first let's consider the case when just a smooth algebraic variety of complex numbers, then, you know, everybody probably knows the of what it means to be symplectic. So symplectic for today will mean, always mean holomorphic symplectic. So, so symplectic, Symplectic structure on Y, symplectic means that there's a form, globally defined form. Again, everything is algebraic or homomorphic, which is closed and non degenerate. And the way it is formulated, of course, this, this notion only makes sense for. Uh, for uh, smooth varieties, and uh, so I want to extend it to single varieties. And just a remark before we do this is that let's for simplicity assume that Y is defined, so Y is spectrum of some algebra, some commutative algebra, then it's known that uh, symplectic structure induces, symplectic uh, structure induces a Poisson algebra structure uh, on this A, which is Poisson, say Poisson bracket. Okay. So I won't recall Poisson bracket. This, of course, not all Poisson brackets come from symplectic structures, but at least every simple. Uh, but you know, when if you know the Poisson bracket, you can, you can recover the symplectic structure from it. Uh, so, mm, mm, so the idea is that now let's assume that Y is uh, singular. So assume that uh, I mean Y is not necessarily smooth. So, uh, so what does it mean? Is why has symplectic singularities, or sometimes people call singular symplectic? So, so assume that y is a just normal algebraic variety, so uh, maybe singular. Uh, and so, assume that uh, it is generically symplectic that there's some open subset u in the y. Uh, so, I'll assume that the co-dimension of the complement. Equal than two, uh, uh, such that uh, this is this guy is smooth and uh, uh, symplectic. So the U, this is this is what I'm talking about U right now. Uh, and uh, under these conditions, it's uh, because of normality, it immediately follows that uh, Y becomes Poisson. So so this is actually Poisson variety, uh, Poisson. Uh, variety which is um, generically symplectic, and then here's a definition. In fact, well, I'll form the definition. Uh, Sasha, <coughs> excuse me, but <coughs> if uh, you define Poisson structure on Y, not on U. No, no, Poisson structure on Y. No, for, for Poisson structure. So for, for, what, uh, kind of, for what kind of functions are they smooth? No, no everything is everything functions by definition. Everything is algebraic, so so somehow, okay. and in fact, instead of C, you should be thinking about arbitrary algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. So uh, so somehow, nothing non-algebraic will ever be mentioned in this talk. Okay. okay. So uh, so definition. Uh, 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 okay. So I'll form out the definition, and then I, I'll make some very important comment about this definition. So definition is that uh, Y is a single symplectic. Means that uh, uh, there exists uh, some uh, x to y resolution of singularities such that well here uh, I require that uh, u was uh, mm, symplectic so omega is the symplectic form such that let's call this map pi such that pi such that the pullback of the form on resolution extends 
to, I mean, this pullback a priori is defined only on the pre image of U, but I want it to be defined everywhere. <coughs> is defined, so it doesn't have poles defined on all of X. So it's defined for all of X, and then it will go automatically close, but I'm not requiring in general it's not, that it's not degenerate. So it could be degenerate. And, and then there's a lemma. So this is a definition of due to Bavila. And then there's a lemma, which is also due to Bavila, which says that this uh, property is independent of the resolution. So if this is true for some x, then it is true for any resolution. Uh, will have the any resolution will have the property that if we pull back the symplectic form, the resolution will, will not have poles, but it could be degenerate. Again, I'll I'll, I'll talk about examples uh, just maybe in five minutes. Uh, uh, so just give me my plan. Uh, uh, so of course uh, the best situation, yeah, maybe. maybe uh, before I talk about best situation, let me. Uh, so so Bavil defined this notion and some, somehow and he proved a lot of kind of nice. Uh, results about this. For for example, one result is that in this case, uh, uh, so uh, 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 if this is true, then y uh, has finitely many symplectic leaps. For people who know what this means, if we have a Poisson structure, then we can. Uh, try to decompose y into symplectic leaves, and and the principle will have some degenerate Poisson structure. Then typically, uh, we'll have uh, infinitely many symplectic leaves. But uh, but here, if y has symplectic singularities, uh, then we'll always have finitely many symplectic leaves. Uh, but of course, the best situation is when we have a symplectic resolution. Sorry, yeah. Sasha. Do you mean that u has uh, finitely many symplectic leaves? No, you is simply you has one symplectic leaf. No, you uh, is symplectic. Uh, yeah, y has uh, finitely many symplectic leaves. So, uh, so you can stratify y, but you can write y as a finite union of smooth, locally closed sub varieties, each of which will be symplectic, or, and or in fact, it will be symplectic leaf. It's it's a kind of. But this is not true for x. Um, this is. Uh, no, this is probably not true for X. And, 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 no, no, the, this no, no, the, this uh, th this doesn't even make sense for X. Uh, X X X X probably doesn't have Poisson structure. So, 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 so this was, I mean, you can you can talk about some like for a Poisson right? Because you see that uh, the point is that X was just an arbitrary resolution. So we can, uh, if it takes some resolution like that, we can start blowing it up, and then uh, and then. Uh, uh, You'll be adding more and more divisors on which the form will be degenerate, and uh, and so there's no reason to think that this thing will be symplectic. Uh, but okay, the best situation is when X is a symplectic resolution. That uh, when uh, the spy star uh, spy star of omega is. But, uh, these symplectic leaves of y, they have different dimensions. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll do some example, just maybe, just, just in a minute. Or maybe if you want, uh, I can do an example. I can do an example right now. So, kind of, kind of, the first non-trivial example is. Uh, 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 or in fact, where we will have a symplectic resolution is that when y is equal to say c2 mod c2, it's a single surface which you can write by equation x y is equal to z squared. And uh, here, uh, the way it looks like is that it has one singular point, and away from the singular point, it's non-singular. And so it, it's it's uh, uh, it, so here here you have two symplectic leaves. Uh, and one symplectic leaf is everything except zero. And uh, the other is, uh, um, and the other symplectic leaf is just a point zero. So 
one symplectic loop is two dimensional, the other symplectic loop is zero dimensional. And in fact, in this case, this has a symplectic resolution. So, so in this case, this X, uh, oh, sorry, so you can uh, do X, which is uh, which is uh, the following thing, which is uh, uh, which is contingent. I'll talk about this example uh, later. This is actually the basic example. So this thing has uh, you can resolve this by cotangent bundle to projective line, which is symplectic because you know cotangent bundle to everything is symplectic, and in fact you know it's an exercise how to construct. How to write a uh, proper birational morphism from contingent bundle to P of P1 into this guy. And so this is a symplectic resolution. Now, before I plunge into uh, let me define one more notion, which will be kind of maybe basic notion today. Uh, and so I so uh, to develop some kind of nice theory, we'll need uh, one more. Kind of sorry, sorry about about this example. Is it the only symplectic resolution? Yes, I think that. Uh, well, I mean, you have to formulate this question correctly, but. Uh, uh, Andrei, как uh, Саша сказал, ты всегда можешь потом в какой-нибудь точке раздуть. You can blow up at any point. No, if you blow up at one point, it will stop being symplectic. Yes. But so, it will be a resolution uh, according no, no, to you. Know, but this is only symplectic resolution. So, I mean, the answer is yes if you formulate it correct. Because the question is, what do you mean by only? But uh, okay. But I think well. well you, 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 you just answer. you just said that uh, there can be uh, many symplectic resolutions. There can or... be many symplectic. No, we'll, we'll see examples when there will be many symplectic resolutions. And just in this particular case, in this particular case, probably it is. I mean. Probably all symplectic, all symplectic resolutions will be isomorphic to this one, but uh, but in, in slightly just in slightly more complicated situation that will probably not. Yeah. Okay, so I did not get I didn't get what is the sense of this equation x y equals to z square. Uh, well, this, this is the I mean it's a surface. I mean the C two mod z squared is isomorphic to, to this. It's just it's a single. This, so this is just uh, the formal definition of C two over z two. Well, I mean, C2 over Z2 is also well defined. You know, but I mean, uh, then I'm asking what for you gave this example? Does it help somehow to write I mean, down it, symplectic uh, resolution no, or what? This was just about, uh, I was asked about symplectic leaves, and I just wanted to say this uh, just, and that they have different dimensions. So, so I wanted to give an example that have two symplectic leaves. But again, let, let, let's, let's move on. Uh, Sorry, can so, I give this leaves and coordinates? No, I mean, it's just the point zero and, and the rest. Oh, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, okay. Uh, so, okay, so one more condition I want to impose to sort of build nice theory is the condition that everything is conical. So you can impose this condition on Y and then also on X. Uh, so it means that, uh, so we uh, given a C star action Y, uh, which has the following uh, property that first of all it uh, 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 it contracts all of y to a point. So there's some also point which will just denote by zero in y, and uh, this interaction contracts everything to y. So it means that so if we take sort of limit t goes to zero of y is equal to uh, this is equal to this point. Zero, so let me just write it here. Uh, something is wrong in my. Uh, some technical difficulty, but okay, let me the screen. So let me. Um, Uh, sorry, I may have some technical difficulty, but my pen is not writing. So uh, I hope it's not. Hope it's not out of battery. No, it's not out of battery. But some, for some reason, it stopped. It stopped writing, and I don't know what to do with this. Let me close it and start again. Um, 
one second let me try to fix it uh, for some reason it never never happened before uh, Maybe do another page. Um, something is really not working here, so let me. Uh, maybe I can really run that house and take your pen because I, some, I think it's it's a problem probably with the I don't know. Five minutes break. Okay, it's not. Okay, now I think it's working, but I will be under creature's name. And uh, so, uh, do you see my screen now? Hello? Uh, yes, you should no, share screen. And uh, I think I did that, but let me let me do it again. Uh, yes, uh, uh, sorry, uh, share screen. Okay. 
Окей. Okay. So, do you see it now? <coughs> да. Там okay. гораздо лучше, и особенно игры, если ты, вы, если ты теперь не будешь выключать видео. Окей. Okay. So, um, uh, right. So, so conical, uh, conical condition is the following. Uh, so again, we have C-star action. On y and there's a point zero in y required that limit it goes to zero is equal to zero c is in c star and y is an arbitrary point in y uh and so that, that's one can uh, have two conditions that we have c star action and that the c star dilates the symplectic form uh, sorry t t is a function no no t is a t is a number It's written T is in C star. Uh, that was symplectic form. It means that T, uh, if we act by T on omega, or if we want T, T up a star of omega, this is equal to T to the I times omega, where I is some positive, num positive integer. <clears throat> so, uh, so that's, this is the, condi this is the conical condition. And uh, for example, uh, this, If I take this y to be c2 mod z2, as I already mentioned, then this is obviously conical. So if I take this just uh, uh, just multiplication by t on c2, uh, then uh, uh, <clears throat> then uh, it uh, uh, it is um, uh, well it descends to y and then and then uh, it makes one y conical. Now, uh, and uh, we can say that x to y is a conical symplectic resolution. Well, if this is true and, and if, uh, you know, if C star acts on both, x and y, Above subject to the above conditions. Someone has to mute microphone. Okay. Uh, Sorry, so so, so, Sasha. What uh, is it true that the symplectic structure on C two? is uh, the standard one. Yes, yes, yes. And the point is, I mean, and, and it, is, it is preserved by Z2. Okay, now, so let's- uh, One more question. Uh, the X, uh, in your case, X is a, a line bundle of uh, CP1. Uh, whether the action of C star uh, is not conical in your sense? No, no, it is conical. No, it's supposed to be contract all of y to a point. It's not going to contract all of x to a point. So yeah. fact, it's not conical in x. It's not, no, no, but it, it will never be. I mean, I mean, uh, if in, in a fine variety, I mean, sorry, non affine variety essentially cannot be conical. Mm -hmm. I mean, a variety of, uh, 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 so, okay, so example, so example number zero is this case when y is equal to c2 mod z2. And then we're going to generalize this example in various directions. So this, this is kind of the basic example and x is t star p1. Sasha, and your i is one in your example, right? I is what is what I in this example is one, yes. Uh, but mm -hmm. but it doesn't really matter what I is. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, I, I can first of all make it even, I can make it equal to 100 because I can just multiply, I can just take 100th power of the action. And so so it's, it's really not essential. So how can you generalize it? So you can generalize into, well, in, in actually in many directions. So, so we'll have like a, uh, uh, several lists of examples if you want. And uh, uh, this, part, th this example will be, uh, uh, will be in, in all of these lists. So one way to generalize this is to consider, is to fix some gamma in SL2C finite subgroup. And then, uh, 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 and then we take Y to be 
C2 mod gamma. And because, uh, uh, because gamma is, um, uh, because uh, gamma is an S SL two C, then uh, it, it means it preserves the standard symplectic structure uh, on C two. And again, here there's just one single point, and uh, away from the single point, everything is smooth, and the symplectic form is well defined there. And uh, and it's known that this ha thing has a kind of canonical minimal resolution, so they can take X to be. It's usually my, you may denote by C two gamma C two mod gamma tilde. This is the minimal. Resolution and this minimal resolution, the way it, uh, uh, the way it uh, uh, looks like is that well we have this well it's a resolution so we have a map from x to y, and uh, so it's an isomorphism away from one special point in y and uh, so special fiber is is a special fiber is a sort of tree of p ones. Uh, and uh, in fact, so it's known that these gammas are in one to one correspondence with simply lazy Dinkin diagrams, and this tree of P1s is exactly this simple lazy Dinkin diagram. So, uh, so that's one example, one uh, sort of source of examples. Another source of examples is the following suppose we take G to be any simple Lie algebra. Uh, and uh, let's take, uh, let's know by NG, it's new potent cone. So we can, it's more or less naturally, almost naturally isomorphic to its dual. So it's more, better taking a potent cone than a dual, but I'll just identify them. So this is new potent cone in G. Uh, and so if G is SLM, this is just new potent N by N matrices. And uh, uh, so, uh, and in this case, uh, uh, this has a canonical uh, kind of well-known well symplectic resolution, namely if we denote by B the flag variety of G, of G, then there's a Springer resolution. And uh, so this is, we take the cotangent bundle of B, and this is going to be X, and uh, you can map it to Y. This is, this is a resolution of singularity, so it's a proper uh, morphism, which is uh, proper birational morphism. So I'm not going to explain how it's defined, but this is kind of a well-known construction. And so this nilpotent cone is always, uh, uh, is always, um, you know, it's a symplectic singularity, which actually has a symplectic resolution. And in fact, you can slightly generalize this example so that uh, you can consider certain transversal slices to other orbits, uh, other important orbits inside the big nilpotent cone. And, um, um, uh, and then it will actually include example one as well, but uh, let me not talk about this. Uh, so that's another example. So another, uh, so uh, uh, so more examples, which will also be generalized later. Let's consider y to be the following thing. Let's consider nth symmetric power of C two. So it means that we consider nth power. We consider C two to the n, and quotient by the symmetric group S n. So again, this is a singular guy, and uh, this has also a well known. Symplectic resolution. Again, every, everything, it's easy to see that everything is conical in all the examples I'm talking about. And the resolution X, this is uh, what's called the Hilbert scheme of endpoints on C2. So I can even define it. I mean, I'm not going to explain why it's the resolution, why it's smooth and so on, but defining is very easy. So it's, it consists of all ideals in the polynomial ring into, into variables. Uh, such that uh, the dimension of the quotient is n. So, hello? Yeah, okay, uh, go on. Okay, yes, I'm, I just, yeah, so that's, an, now let me, before I mention a few other examples and then, you know, I, I want to give some list examples, and then I want to mention what what we want 
what people want to do with them. So let me give you one example, uh, which doesn't have a, which has, which is a symplectic singularity, but which doesn't have a symplectic resolution. Namely, let's consider y to be not C2 mod Z2, but let's consider y to be C4 mod Z2, which can, so C4 with some standard symplectic structure and, uh, uh, and C2 just X by multiplication by plus minus one. Mm, so, so this guy, you can show that this is a symplectic uh, singularity. But uh, doesn't have a symplectic resolution. And in fact, you can generally this is this example. It's a part of the following thing that supp suppose we ha again have again have G, which is a simple Lie algebra, uh, and we take Y to be the closure. So in fact, closure of any important orbit, um, or well, al almost any important orbit, uh, is is symplectic singularity. But you can take in this case Y closure of uh, minimal important orbit. Of an important orbit of minimal dimension, <coughs> and uh, so if G is not of type A, if G is not SLN, uh, you finished with example number four. Uh, I'm slightly general. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a no, no. I I didn't finish with example number. So you 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 are going to explain why it doesn't have a resolution? No, I'm not going to explain. I mean, I'm not going to explain why it doesn't. Have, I mean, I'm not going. To, I mean, you know. I'm not, I'm not proving anything, just giving, I mean, it will take some time to explain why, why it does. How, I, I, I'm just generalizing this example. So I'm saying that if you take this minimal important orbit, closure of minimal important orbit, so if G is not SLM, then, it, uh, then there's no symplectic resolution. And if G is SP4, then uh, this y is exactly this closure of minimum important orbit is exactly C four mod Z two. And what well, so, what is, uh, what's the way of proving how you prove this? Huh? To construct this one thing to prove that there is no symplectic. Are there some abstraction for this? Uh, well, uh, in this case, I think that's. Frankly, I don't. I mean, in this particular example, I don't remember. But I mean, in some sense, it will be. So, well, I have to think. I mean, if I if I know okay. some kind of reasonable way to do this, but but it's kind of known that it's not the case. Uh, so um, let me let, let me now. Like, uh, uh, what if you blow up just this? Uh, why uh, will you like have? Um, Non-trivial residue, like Paul, or on the ex exceptional divisor. Mm. No, no, you will not have. A, see, if you resolve, I mean, I claim first of all the symplectic singularity. So if you resolve it, then the symplectic form there will not have poles; it will only have zeros. I mean, any result, whatever whatever resolution you take, the claimant symplectic form <coughs> will be well defined on on the whole resolution, but will have zeros. Ah, I see. So, but it, uh, uh, so, um, right. And so then there are other, uh, there's a kind of uh, 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 other list of examples, which maybe I'll talk about this later because somehow I want to uh, sort of move on. So then the Kajima quiver varieties, that's, that's a big list of examples, big sorts of examples. Quiver varieties, you know, that's a big source. Of uh, uh, big source of uh, 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 conical symplectic resolutions. And uh, I should say that almost all examples we talked about are, uh, uh, we, we have talked about so far, are actually Nikajima Quiv writers. Like, well, except that, you know. This example number four is not an academic variety, and you know Hilbert scheme. This number three is an academic variety, and number two, and number two is well, number one. This uh, C two mod gamma is uh, is again an academic variety, and uh, 
This example number two, so it's it's an academic variety if G is SLN, if G is not SLN, it's not an academic variety. But, uh, uh, and uh, maybe uh, example number six, let me uh, talk about hypertoric varieties very briefly, and then I'll move on. So, uh, so that means the following. So suppose we take just C star to the end, some power N, and we take some, some subtors here. Uh, then this guy, uh, uh, the C star to the end, in particular subtors, acts on C CN, just in a standard way. And if it has a CN, therefore it also acts, also acts on its cotangent bundle which is just CN plus dual space. And so we take, uh, let me denote the torus, let me do like this to denote, to distinguish it from the other T. And, uh, and then we take Y to be the sort of Hamiltonian reduction of this with respect to T. So, uh, uh, so that means that we take, well, I want it to be uh, uh, an affine conical variety. And uh, I, uh, 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 that means that I take Hamiltonian reduction in the following sense. I take just spectrum of invariant functions. So, I mean, uh, there's a moment map here. So I can take pretty much of zero under the moment map. Then I take functions on that. And then I take functions which are invariant with respect to the torus. And that will be y. And that thing always has, uh, I mean, if I take a reduc Hamiltonian reduction in a different sense by introducing some stable points and so on, then you can actually define the resolution of this. So this uh, always has a symplectic resolution. That's kind of another source. And in fact, this number six is the, is the easiest uh, source of example. So somehow there are many conjectures in symplectic duality, for example, and more or less all of them are known for hypertoric varieties. So, uh, so hypertoric varieties is kind of testing ground for all conjectures you make in this business. Okay, now, uh, what do we want to do with them? So maybe uh, one thing, uh, let me uh, 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 very briefly say something which uh, mentions some subject which I'm not going to talk about in this talk because I won't have time. And this subject is the subject of quantization. And uh, I just want to very briefly justify uh, this open calls idea about uh, subjective resolutions being Lie algebra for 21st century. The point is that there's a uh, theory which is due to mostly, well, uh, I think I should mention maybe Ginsburg, Kaledian, maybe Kava. Well, I think that particular thing is mostly due to Ginsburg and Kaledian. This is a, uh, or also Bezrukovnikov. Uh, and this is the story about uh, canonical quantizations of such Y. So produce a family of canonical. So I'll say later what this family is parameterized by. Quantizations of Y. So I'm assuming Y is a fine. So Y is spec of some algebra A, and this is a Poisson algebra. And this is, if this is a conical symplectic, well, if this is a conical symplectic singularity, at least with a symplectic resolution, then they have some kind of nice theory of quantizations. And, uh, and, and this again, quantizations in the algebraic sense. So somehow we just produce some non-commutative algebras uh, with the filtration such that they're socially graded is equal to, is equal to A. And uh, so kind of basic example is the following. Uh, basic example is that if we go back to the case when N was the nilpotent cone of G, uh, then what we can do is that you can take uh, the universal developing algebra of G of the of this uh, 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 of the Lie algebra. Know that th this is should be, can be thought of as a quantization of G star. So it's known that dual space of the Lie algebra has has a Poisson structure. So and it's quantization kind of canonical quantization as a universal developing algebra. And the universal developing algebra has a big center. I mean, if it's a simple Lie algebra, it has a big center, which is described by Harishandra. And if you take quotient of U of G by a central character, 
I'll remind maybe later what the central characters are parameters by, then this is a quantization. This is a quantization of, sorry, I'm again doing something wrong. Uh, uh, quantization of uh, functions on the nilpotent column. So, I mean, here the left-hand side has a filtration such that it's uh, uh, associated graded is the uh, uh, is the uh, is functions on the bottom cone. Uh, so, therefore, this uh, uh, so this kind of general theory of Ginzburg, Kaledian, and others it produces a family of non-commutative algebras, which in the case of uh, uh, in the case of uh, 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 in this case when y is the important cone. Of some Lie algebra, then this family of non commutative algebras is just uh, uh, this family of non commutative algebras, quotients of universal enveloping algebra of G by central characters. So, therefore, basically, if you, uh, I mean, if you have a non commutative algebra, then you can hope that it has some interesting, for example, representation theory. And uh, the representation theory you will be developing for, for an arbitrary symplectic resolution, for in the case of Springer resolution, will be just representation theory of, Lie, of simple Lie algebras. So, kind of, so, so there's a very big activity uh, on rep about representation theory of quantizations of symplectic resolutions. And uh, uh, and uh, in the case of uh, Springer resolution, this activity is just literally about representation theory of simple real algebra. So, uh, so, so, uh, so today, I mean, I probably won't have time to talk about quantizations because uh, I will have to talk about simpler things. Uh, But uh, uh, but this is this is the idea that somehow this uh, so maybe I'll, let me write it so symplectic resolution produce uh, interesting non-commutative algebras. Um, and um, again, these algebras, uh, in the case of Springer, Springer resolution, are cl closely related to ju just universal developing algebra with simple the algebra. Okay. Do people hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Uh, now uh, I want to move to the subject of symplectic duality, and here, uh, well, I want to actually talk a little bit more about uh, geometry of this uh, symplectic conical symplectic singularities and conical symplectic resolutions. So assume that we have this x over y. This is this conical symplectic um, resolution. Then I'm going to attach uh, two fine dimensional vector spaces. In fact, uh, two fine dimensional vector spaces together with integral lattice in them. And uh, this will be, a, this will play a very important role in what is going to come next. So one, uh, and, and, and the, now before I do this, I want to make some very important remarks. Then, The structure. So X is a existence of X is a property and not structure in the following sense that uh, so the same X can have several different uh, symplectic resolutions and um, the same Y you mean? The same Y, I'm sorry, yes. And the same Y can have uh, many different symplectic resolutions and the things that I want to do. Uh, I want to sort of canonically attach them to Y rather than to X. So sometimes in order to do them, I have to assume existence of X, but then I want to claim that uh, the objects I'm defining are independent of the choice of X. So for example, uh, the, the, this will happen what I'm going to say now. So let's consider the following space, which shall denote denote by T sub Y, and uh, uh, a priori it will depend on X, but actually in the end of the day, it will not depend on X. So it, it's the second cohomology of X. And it has an integral lattice lambda, which is just the second uh, cohomology with integral coefficients. You can show that under my conditions, it doesn't second cohomology doesn't have torsion. 
Uh, and uh, and in this also we can show that it's the same thing as the Picard group of X. Um, so, um, well, this all requires proof, but it's not, not very difficult. And so the claim is that indeed the space is independent, well, or in the sled is the, the well, let me just say that, uh, I mean, it's clear that it's enough to uh, prove it for uh, the cohomology of the integral coefficient. So I'll just say that Picar of X uh, uh, is independent of X. I mean, that it, I mean, it depends on the Y, but it doesn't depend on X. X. Can this is kind of rise it in terms of y only. Or? No, no, that's the point. You, you, you cannot, <laughs> but it, but but it's but it's a it's a very simple exercise to show that if you have two two resolutions, then the Picard is economically the same. I mean, it's it's essentially just because uh, this uh, if you have two resolutions, that then it means that they open they have some common piece, some common open piece which is the same. And so common open piece is going to have, I mean, under these conditions, uh, what will happen is that this uh, common open, open piece automatically, the complement to it will have co-dimension at least two in X. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and therefore, if you think about Picard right in terms of divisors, then you can ignore everything which has co-dimension two and higher. And co-dimension two, yeah, co-dimension two and higher. So, uh, so that's- Sorry, I do, don't understand. Like uh, you can uh, take a resolution and then blow up it. No, you cannot go up because if, if you go up, you, you, you lose the kind. No, I mean, it's, it's not true about arbitrary resolution, but if they're symplectic, then, ah, then you cannot. I mean, if you have, a, if you have some smooth symplectic, right, if you blow it up and just pull, pull back the, uh, blow it up, say, the point or somewhere, then if you mm -hmm. pull back the symplectic form, then it will have zeros. Mm -hmm. It will never have poles, but it will have zeros. But and so the claim is that if you have two symplectic resolutions, then it can show that they they are automatically isomorphic away from co-dimension two. And so uh, so now in fact this uh, this is more difficult. But actually, Namikawa uh, defined this uh, space T sub y really starting from y. Uh, let me write for any y here, but I mean. I mean, but when I say for any y, I mean that not necessarily for y which have a symplectic resolution. So, I not necessarily for those y which have a resolution, which have a symplectic resolution. But it's still, I mean, the point is that uh, kind of the flavor of his definition is that even if it doesn't have a symplectic resolution, you can sort of try to consider, you can resolve it as much as possible in the class of symplectic singularities and then do something similar. Uh, so that's one space. And then this space uh, is kind of plays an uh, interesting role in geometry of this act of both X and Y. So the claim is that, again, I think this is due to maybe Ginsburg and Kaledin, that is a canonical canonical deformation of y, also of x if you have x, uh, canonical symplectic deformation uh, uh, such that with base, let me say, uh, with base uh, tx. And uh, this deformation has the following property. So it means that you have some kind of, uh, well, okay, let me do it for Y. Uh, so let, let me assume, unless otherwise said, let me assume that act Y has a symplectic resolution. Uh, and uh, so then we have some kind of curly Y, which leaves over this, uh, this, this should be TY, not TX, uh, which leaves over this TY. And then uh, uh, the fiber over zero is my original Y. And generic, fi everything is, so the fibers are symplectic and generic fiber is smooth. And this, this condition that the generic fiber is smooth, this is actually equivalent to saying that uh, Y uh, has a symplectic resolution.
In fact, you can say more. You can show that each generic fiber is, uh, I mean, uh, each generic fiber is homeomorphic to the, uh, uh, to the corresponding resolution, but uh, let me not go into this. And in fact, you can also talk about- So you, uh, you can use this to, 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 to try to give a definition of, of Ty in terms of y, no? uh, yes, this is this is this, this is yeah. You're right that somehow this can be used to define Ty in a different way, but uh, you can uh, you can define it by means of some kind of well. I mean, you have to say that this defi this deformation is also universal in some sense, and you have to say if you say in what sense it is universal, then <clears throat> then it will uh, then it will give you an alternative definition of Ty. Sasha, uh, Sasha, Ty is a, some discrete object. No, right? no, it, it's, it's a vector space. It's but a, but you, you said it's, it's. I define it. It's a vector space. So it's a complex vector space. But uh, you, you said uh, that it's H two of X Z. It's H two of the complex. It's H two. No, no, no. Lambda. See, it's, lambda is. Yes, uh, it's it's H two with. Oh, complex. I see. I see. I see. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, uh, that's fine. No, no, no. Lambda, Everything is clear. Fine, fine, fine. That's that's uh, fine. Coming uh -huh. to lambda, if we take some little lambda in lambda, then uh, uh, any such uh, guy defines the claim is that also well. You can view it as a point uh, on the one hand, but also it is also a point here. So it defines, so it's one of the fibers of this deformation, but it also defines a partial resolution. Of y, and uh, again, if I assume that wine principle has a symplectic resolution, then the idea is that for if the take this lambda is sufficiently generic. So generic lambda will define uh, by partial resolution. I mean that something which maps into y in a proper but rational way, but not necessarily smooth. But for generic lambda, uh, generic lambda will define uh, uh, a, res a symplectic resolution, partial, you know, partial symplectic resolution. That's, that's important. Everything symplectic uh, uh, will define a symplectic resolution. And uh, the structure, uh, but somehow the point is that this, uh, the way it will typically look like is that this, uh, uh, everything will be, so if you think about this, uh, I mean, let me draw a picture like this. So everything will be decomposed, this lambda will be decomposed in some chambers. And so uh, uh, lambda will, uh, decompose. So there will be some walls. So there will be some walls on which uh, the resolution will, will not be a resolution, meaning that it will not be smooth. And if we remove the walls, then a lambda will decompose into chambers. And in each chamber, the resolution is the same. So the resolution, the resolution will only depend on the chamber. In each chamber, resolution. Is the same, and uh, uh, so what? Uh, and so, uh, mm, well, if you have a symplectic resolution x over y, then it's easy to define what this chamber is. It's just the ample, it's the line bundles on x. Remember, lambda is just the picard of x, and so uh, the chamber is just the ample colon of x, so just the line bundles on, on x, which are ample. But and then mm, so. You might have many chambers like this, and they will correspond to different resolutions. But this lattice lambda will be the same for all of them. That's kind of the structure. So, so integral, so integral points in my Ty they correspond to both deformations and resolutions. And in fact, somehow it will be true that the if you take the corresponding resolution and the correspond if you if you take this lambda here, you can take the fiber of the deformation, or you can take the resolution. And they will be homeomorphic. They will not be uh, isomorphic as algebraic varieties because, for example, one will be a fine, the other will not be a fine. But they will be a home. Uh, they will be homeomorphic. Uh, okay. So that's an and just maybe a, a remark about what I mentioned at some point before. Remark is that uh, the canonical family of quantizations is also parameterized by the same space. Ty also parameterizes. Some nice quantizations of what? So 
So what this means is that you can actually define some canonical family of quantizations of Y, which are, which are parameterized by, by this vector space. Uh, so that's it's, kind of one. Sa Sasha, two questions. Yes. Uh, whether this, uh, whether this um, parameterization is unique? Uh, uh, what do you mean? I mean, it depends. On, is uh, universal? Well, I mean, again, you can. You can no, it, it is universal. Some, I mean, subject to some conditions because um, uh, I mean. So you have to say what you mean by quantization and so on, but uh, but I mean if you form things properly, then yes. But uh, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, also, do you mean that the, the uh, chambers, uh, the walls of the chambers are real? Uh, uh, well, I mean th this is even this is integral. I mean lambda is even the lattice. I mean this is uh, this is the the the, the, the uh, so they they're not they're not just real. They're rational if you want. They are uh, rational. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, I mean when I say that decompose into chamber, decompose into ch but but the same. Um, see if you, if you consider this deformation, then you will see the same picture there. Then the point I'm saying that the generic fiber is smooth. Mm -hmm. I mean there, there will be some bad locus when the fiber is not smooth. And this bad locus will consist of, of exactly this hyperplanes, but of complexifications, if you want to feel this, of this hyperplanes. Mm -hmm. So away from a configuration of hyperplanes, this thing will always be smooth, but... Uh, 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 that's, that's what I was asking about. Yeah, okay. that's, that's the picture. But, but, but the hyperplanes are actually defined over, over integers. Okay, now another space uh, is uh, also another... Space which I'll denote by S Y. This is the following. Uh, 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 this is defined the following way. So let's consider. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's consider the following thing. Let's consider automorphisms of Y. Uh, but automor by automorphisms, I, I mean automorphisms. Let me a by A denote the group of automorphisms of Y. But when I say automorphisms, I mean that automorphisms which commute with everything, namely, first of all, they commute with the simple, they, they preserve the symplectic structure, the same as to commute with uh, Poisson, preserve Poisson structure, and also commute, let me just write it here with this C star. So I assume like everything is conical. And, uh, and then it's very easy to see that this is a fine dimensional algebraic group. So, uh, uh, and uh, so SY uh, is the Cartan subalgebra of A. And uh, so Cardan subalgebra means that somehow there's some S uh, inside A, which is a torus. And so this S Y is the Lie algebra of this torus. And therefore Lie algebra of every torus has a canonical integral structure. So this S Y also has has integral structure. Okay, uh, so uh, now let me uh, formulate one thing which probably should have appeared earlier, but yeah, uh, one important question is that uh, when am I supposed to stop? Hello? Uh, does anybody hear me or? We uh, hear you. Yes. Do. Da, 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 da. We are here, yes. Yes, uh, the question is when am I supposed to stop? Uh, as usual at four plus. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so now I'm passing to the subject of duality. And duality is a very kind of mysterious thing which uh, uh, doesn't have a kind of very rigorous mathematical formulation. So let me try to formulate it in the following way. That uh, kind of idea is that this conical symplectic singularities tend to come in pairs let me write x, x star. Um, 
And uh, uh, well, it's not very, and, and, well, okay, let me just again format a slogan, slogans that uh, you can understand geometry uh, of X star in terms of X, but, but, but in very, any question about geometry of X star can be understood in terms of geometry of X. So I'll, and uh, uh, I'll mention if, just in a moment, I'll say several basic things about this, but the idea is that it should be thought of uh, as a kind of something similar to mirror symmetry mirror symmetry and in mirror symmetry somehow you know people talk about one variety being nearer dual to the other but it's actually very not very easy to say what it means to uh, 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 for two writers to be mirror dual and uh, sorry sorry hello Roma says that there is a question in chat. Uh, there's a question in chat. Uh, you know, it's it's a little well. I'm not so, so no. sorry. Oh. Are the numbers related by some kind of whale group? Uh, well, there, there there is a there is a whale group here, which is called whale Namikawa group. So so Namikawa defines some kind of uh, 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 analog of whale group. I don't remember if it. I don't think it acts transitively on chambers in general. This is probably not true, but 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 there is there is some uh, uh, there is some group which does act on chambers, but I, I think it's not the action is not transitive on chambers. Okay, so uh, 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 so when I just coming back to this kind of philosophical thing, I was saying that uh, you know the history of mirror symmetry was that you know it first appeared maybe in physics, and then there was some kind of mathematical so first kind of examples of mathematical mirror symmetry were kind of computational kind of enumerative. And then there was this Kansevich, uh, Kansevich's uh, homological mirror symmetry, which who, who managed to formulate uh, who, who, to, uh, some kind of uh, categorical statement, which uh, to a large extent incorporated all uh, enumerative statements in it. And uh, so here the story is kind of similar. So there are a lot of kind of, uh, there are many enumerative things we can formulate here um, about what the relation between X and X star. And then there's also categorical uh, uh, symplectic duality, but that part, I definitely won't have time to talk about this today. And maybe, uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue, but even, even if I'm going to continue, probably I will not talk about categorical symplectic duality, uh, uh, even if I continue. Okay, so, but let me maybe, um, maybe give you a couple of examples. So, so basic, the most basic thing is the following. Uh, basic thing is that this duality is supposed to interchange these two spaces T and X. So uh, T, uh, oh, in fact, I should uh, call this Y and not uh, X. Although again, interesting uh, things will uh, will happen uh, uh, for, uh, sorry, I'm not familiar with this thing. Uh, so interesting thing are going to, interesting things are going to happen for when we have, uh, when we do have symplectic resolution, but uh, uh, but uh, but let me for now not assume this. So I'll say that ty is s y star, and uh, s y is t y star. No, plus many other properties. And I'll mean, mention some of them later. Uh, before I uh, form of what is many other properties, uh, what is many other properties are, let me give you a couple of examples. So example, which is kind of uh, maybe one of the most basic for me is the following. So assume that again, Y is really this important cone of some Lie algebra. And then let G check be the Langlands dual Lie algebra. So that's the Lie algebra whose uh, root system is dual to the root system of G. Langlands dual. Then the claim is that uh, Y star is N G check. And so here, uh, let me 
uh, tell you what the spaces are. So, uh, so we have the symplectic resolution of the nilpotent cone, which is uh, uh, by means of Cotian bundle flag variety. So, um, 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 so what was the space uh, T T Y? So T Y is supposed to be the second cohomology of this thing. Well, let me do the complex version. You can the same will, ha will happen with the integral version, and so. You know, cotangent bound for flag variety is homotopically equivalent to the flag variety itself. So this thing is the same as second cohomology of, of the flag variety itself, and that thing is the uh, uh, let me denote it by H star G, where H uh, uh, G is the Cartan subalgebra of G. There's a kind of no, in fact, the second cohomology of the flag variety is equal to the dual space new Cartan algebra. And uh, now, what is SY in this case? Well, it's easy to see that. Well, remember that we had this uh, group A, which was the group of Hamiltonian automorphisms, which commuted with uh, uh, the actions of C, of C star. And it's very easy to see that in this case, the group A is the group G, which is, you know, this is the, if you want, this is the adjoint group. Uh, a joint group such that this Lie algebra is equal to G. That's uh, uh, that's easy to see, and so therefore its Cartan subalgebra is uh, uh, is the Cartan subalgebra of G. So 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 S Y, this is H uh, G itself. Now, like I said, so Langlois dual Lie algebra is defined. Uh, just its definition is that its root system is dual to that of G. So, so when so they have to dualize the root system, and so dualization root system just by definition dualizes the Cartan. So, kind of more or less by definition, by definition you have um, uh, you have uh, if you consider uh, if you consider uh, if you switch to Langlands dual. Then, uh, 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 so going from G to G check, uh, sends H G to to its dual. So what I mean by this is that the dual space of the Cartan subalgebra is canonically the Cartan subalgebra with the Langlois dual the algebra, and so therefore uh, that kind of justifies what I said before. At least it's, it's compatible with everything I said before, uh, namely that if you pass from uh, new potent cone of G to new potent cone of G check, then these two spaces uh, get interchanged. Well, this example is very nice, and that's kind of the most important example in some sense, but that example is also a little bit misleading because, in that case, you know, uh, it's in principle, of course, it's not very easy to uh, distinguish a vector space from its dual. So, at least they have the same dimension. So, you might think that always, for example, the spaces S and T have the same dimension. And, uh, but that's actually not, uh, not, not at all the case. Uh, so uh, uh, maybe another example. Uh, let's consider uh, let's consider the following thing. Uh, let's consider um, uh, y to be the C two mod gamma, which I had before, where gamma is a finite subgroup of SL two. And uh, now, what are the spaces here? Well. Uh, and so gamma is a finite subgroup of SL2C. And uh, we know I said already before that this uh, uh, groups are in one-to-one -one correspondence with simply lace Dinkin diagrams. So, uh, so gamma corresponds to some G, which is a simple Lie algebra, simple simply laced Lie algebra. So Lie algebra, simple Lie algebra of type AD. And uh, mm, now uh, it's uh, mm, uh, it follows from what I said before about how we describe the resolution of this that the space T Y here is uh, uh, going to be well at least its dimension is going to be exactly the rank of G so dimension of Cartan subalgebra of G and uh, on the other hand if you uh, if you uh, try to Compute the space S Y, then it's uh, S Y is uh, if you 
uh, it's easy to see it will be the following. It's dimension will be actually one if G is SLN and this SLN corresponds to gamma being cyclic and uh, uh, zero if G is not SLN. That's an exercise if you want. So uh, if G is not SLN, then uh, our group A of Hamiltonian tomorphisms is just trivial. And uh, uh, if G is SLN, then this group is, uh, is just one dimensional torus C star. And uh, so we see that at least uh, this, this is an example when the spaces T and Y have uh, 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 in general very different dimensions. And now what is the dual in this case? The dual in this case is precisely this thing which I already mentioned before. This is the closure of minimal nilpotent orbit in G. And so if G is SLN, it also has a symplectic resolution. If G is not SLN, it doesn't have a symplectic resolution. Again, you can show that at least this, if you take this closure of minimal important orbit, that these two spaces are uh, switched. Okay, uh, so um, now maybe, uh, maybe let me mention one thing coming from physics. Uh, so, um, so, okay, so let me write it here. So, uh, where does it appear? Sorry, I'm doing something wrong. Uh, in physics, uh, well, the answer is the following. So I won't. I, I will very very briefly. Oh, start oh, oh, in, in the last. That's what I said. So, well, it depends what G is. So if G is SLN, then it does. If G is not SLN, then it doesn't. So uh, actually, uh, let me just say that if G is SLN, then, then there exists X and X will be a cotangent bundle to projective space of dimension minus one. Yeah. Uh, but in general, and you know, we can see what, it's the resolution of some affine variety and this affine variety will be exactly the closure of the minimal orbit in SLN, but in general, there will be no X. Yeah. <laughs> You mean those the cases when there's no resolution? Yeah. Yes, I mean uh, I I saw this in the very beginning. So uh, uh, you know, if I, if I go here, uh, uh, so, uh, you see the author says that symplectic conical symplectic singularities tend to come in, in pairs. That's what they uh, I mean. I didn't say resolution. Uh -huh. And in fact, that that's that's a pretty typical situation that we have a resolution on one side and don't have on the other side. In fact, I'll I'll mention sort of how to how to see this. I mean, if you know this sort of why, how to see that it's dual will have a resolution. So before this, let me just mention the, the words from physics. So this has to do has to do with uh, three dimensional n equal four. supersymmetric uh, quantum field theories. And so if you have such a theory, then so for any such theory, you can talk about its modular space of vacuum and uh, you can actually uh, uh, talk about, uh, well, which is some complicated space, but you can talk about some kind of Relatively simple parts of the space, and uh, and uh, uh, so any such theory has two special parts of its moduli space of vacuum, which are called Higgs branch M H, which is Higgs branch. and M uh, C, which is Coulomb branch. And again, for now, these are just words. 
and uh, and the idea is that, well, my requirement was that uh, uh, y uh, was always a fine, so this will not be the case for, for general quantum field theories, but for example, for gauge theories, it will always be the case. And so the idea is that, well, y will be mh and y star will be mc. So, and uh, thesis have sort of a lot of expectations about how this, well, first of all, I have a lot of examples and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, in particular, they produce a lot of pairs, y and y star. So sort of a lot of known, a lot, a lot of pairs, which are supposed to be symplectically dual. And uh, uh, the idea is that, uh, Gosh, they are supposed to be uh, symplectic dual, but how many, how much of this is is proven? No, no, but I mean, so if, you see, but again, I said that I don't want to answer questions about physics. What do you mean? But what? I mean, first of all, you don't have a notion what 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 you mean by three D and equal four quantum field theory. And automatically, it doesn't make sense. So somehow, so you can't prove anything. So for for uh, for some particular class, I mean, there are some classes of theories. Uh, for example, gauge theories, for which uh, which you can't really define as quantum field theories, at least you don't know what it means. But you can define this MH and MC rigorously, and and then you know not everything is proven, but something is proven. But but but, but I mean you, you know your first task is to sort of you know uh, quantum field theories and for mathematically doesn't make sense. So somehow the only thing you can do mathematically is you can we can say that you can attach quantum field theory to some mathematical objects. For example, gauge theories are attached. Essentially, to reductive group and representation, and and then we can. What are what are, what are other examples? Not gauge theories. Well, there are lots of examples. Which uh, see, for example, if you consider this, uh, uh, for example, this uh, 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 this uh, if you consider this example when you have the nil potent cone and the dual nil potent cone, then if G is not of type A, then the theory w w from which it comes is not a gauge theory. What what it is. Well, what do you mean? I mean, Gaiot and Witten denoted by T of G. Is that, is that uh, well, if you can ask how to, how to produce it, you can, well, the way they produce it, you know, this, this, uh, all, all the such things are produced by means of this. this, this well, I see. So you say that, you, you say that, or they say that it, this is not a Lagrangian field theory. Right. I mean, this is not like this is not Lagrangian field theory exactly. So, so and uh, so typically, uh, uh, so, 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 so in this business, that so such things appear all the time. Yes. And also they say that there's a notion of 3D mirror symmetry. 3D mirror symmetry says that somehow have a, uh, such a theory, then we can consider another theory, then there exists another theory such that it's Higgs and Coulomb branch are switched or uh, interchanged. And so typically, even if you start with, Lagr I mean, for example, if you start with gauge theory, uh, which has a Lagrangian description, then it's dual theory typically will not have a Lagrangian description. So, uh, you know, there are this kind of class S theories. I mean, there's like whole zoo of theories and a lot of them, uh, many of them do not have Lagrangian description. And so many, many of them are not, I mean, not, not only they're not gauge theorists, they, they don't even have a Lagrangian. I mean, in particular, they, they, they only exist as quantum field theories. They don't, they don't exist as, as classical field theories. But again, I said in the very beginning, I don't want to answer questions about physics because I mean, I think in this audience, I'm not the person who is supposed to answer questions about physics. Uh, 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 so, uh, mm, okay, but let me just write it here that uh, in this way, physicist produce a lot of examples of such things. And in fact, even the requirement that everything is conical is kind of too strong because uh, these this guys are, for example, not necessarily conical. And there are interesting examples of uh, things which are not conical, which appear in this way. For example, if you, if you start a pure gauge theory, pure 3D and equal four gauge theory, then uh, it's uh, Coulomb branch, for example, is not, is not um, conical. But again, I will not go into this. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I'm just thinking whether I want to uh, uh, give a couple of other examples. Well, before I, uh, no, maybe before I talk about more examples. Um, mm, well, actually, maybe let me give one more example. So let's go, 
let's discuss the hyperstoric example. In this case, everything is known. And so my the hyperstoric uh, uh, examples come from the following. Remember that I have some T inside torus inside C star to the N. And in fact, I can then, if I have a torus inside C star to the N, then I can uh, uh, form a short exact sequence of tori. So this, I have a torus which sees inside C star to the N. I can see some uh, quotient and I'll denote it by T sub F. And so the word, the letter F here stands for flavor. So this is, so in uh, uh, in quantum field theory, uh, uh, people have the notion of flavor symmetry. And so this flavor symmetry group in this, for this hyper T sub F. And then you can dualize this. So you can, for every torus, there's a canonical dual torus such that it's, the, du the duality, it changes the character and co-character letters. And so you'll have the dual, dual torus TF check. Well, C star to the N is canonical self-dual. Uh, and then there will be quotient, which will be dual torus to T. And note that you know that in order to construct uh, in order to construct um, this hypertoric variety, what I need I need a torus which sits inside C star to the n. And note that in this way I started with a torus inside C star to the n, and I produced another torus actually of completely different dimension in general, which sits inside C star to the n. And so the idea is that if my y was the Hamiltonian reduction. Uh, uh, um, of T star CN by T, then Y dual is going to be the Hamiltonian reduction of T star CN by this TF check. And then there are many other, I mean, I formally, the only property of this duality which I formulated so far is that this S and T spaces are interchanged, but in fact, there are many, many others. And essentially all the conjectures we can formulate in this example uh, uh, for this hyperthoric example, stand no. Okay, maybe let me form it. I have to stop. Uh, uh, let me form it one more thing. Just um, uh, uh, so um, uh, so. Let me give you kind of uh, an example uh, of uh, what um, how we can get some information about geometry of Y star from geometry of X. So the question is, how do you know? How do you know by looking uh, uh, by looking at y? Sorry, how do you know if, say, y star has a symplectic resolution? When I say how do you know, I mean how do you know by just looking at x, or even what do the, what, what what do these symplectic resolutions correspond to? Well, uh, it's, it's actually it's. Looking on X or on Y? On Y. On, on, on y. In fact, uh, I, I want to do everything for, for Y, for this singular guy. So, um, well, uh, uh, or let me form out this question slightly better. So we know that this T of Y star, uh, which has this inside this uh, lattice lambda of Y star, this is supposed, uh, well, this T of Y star is supposed to be uh, just uh, S of Y, and uh, this is this Cartan subalgebra of the group of Hamiltonian automorphisms, and this is uh, the uh, sort of uh, Hamiltonian co-characters, Hamiltonian co-weights, or, or co-weights of this group of Hamiltonian group of Hamiltonian automorphisms. So, in other words, elements here, so lambda and lambda Y star, it's it's a, uh, it's a homomorphism from C star to automorphisms of Y. And uh, so the question is, how do you know if this guy is, so we know, so I said that these lambdas correspond to partial resolutions. How do you know that this resolution is, is actually a resolution, not a partial? <laughs> is the following, well, that's, if you want this as a conjecture, I mean, or, or it's a required property of this duality that, uh, so the lambda is good, which means that for Y star, so it defines a resolution 
equal y star if uh, it has uh, only one fixed point if this uh, if y if you can see the y c star fixed points if this is just if this is just this point zero that we had at the beginning and uh, and uh, uh, so the, if the space of fixed points is zero dimensional and so in particular we can see that uh, the following example so if we take y to be c2 mod gamma so if gamma is not cyclic uh, then uh, you can show that uh, this group a this group of automorphisms is trivial in this case So in particular, you can't, so, so basically you can ask the following question. Uh, what does it mean to find a symplectic resolution of Y star? I mean, to find a symplectic resolution of Y star, what you need, you need to define a Hamiltonian C star action on Y, which has isolated fixed points or a late fixed point. Uh, but in this case, there are no Hamiltonian homomorphisms, uh, which at least which commute the dilations. And, uh, and therefore, in this case, uh, 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 Y star has, should not have a resolution. I mean, when I say should not have resolution, of course, I mean that should not have a symplectic resolution. And uh, now suppose that we're actually, uh, maybe that will be the last thing I'll, I'll say today. So kind of, and, uh, and then, well, I'll ask questions. So suppose that we're in the best possible situation. Suppose that both uh, X and, uh, uh, suppose that both Y and Y star have symplectic resolution. So suppose that we have, sorry. Suppose that, we have some x star which is a resolution here and uh, some x which is a resolution here now uh, uh, and the fact that y star has resolution as i explained that means that there is some c star action on the y which has only one uh, fixed point on y in fact it, it automatically acts on x as well and here it will have isolated fixed points so here right here isolated And uh, likewise, in all, I mean, we, we can now switch the roles of Y and Y star and say that if, since Y has symplectic resolution, it means that we also have an action, um, this choice of resolution X over Y corresponds to a choice of C star action here with isolated fixed points. And so another expectation that in this case, another expectation uh, uh, is that in this case, this set of, this finite set of fixed points on X should be canonically the same as set of fi uh, a set of finite set fi of fixed points on the dual. And uh, well, this, by, this should be bijection. This bijection should have some properties. I mean, uh, this set of fixed points actually comes with natural partial order and this should reverse this partial order. But the remark I want to make is that in general, if you have a variety with cis direction, any space with cis direction, then uh, the, if, if it has finitely many fixed points that this uh, number of fixed points is equal to its other characteristic. Uh, also, it falls from a theorem of Kaledin that uh, all cohomology of F, such an X of a symplectic conical symplectic resolution are uh, even. So this H I X C is uh, equal to zero if I is odd. So in fact, he proves much more than that. He proves that all cohomology is generated by algebraic cycles, but in particular, uh, uh, but in particular, there's no, there's no odd cohomology. So this number of fixed points, if I have finitely many of those, that's equal to dimension, total dimension of H star uh, of X. And now this is now the same as the total number of fixed points on the dual. And that's equal to dimension of the cohomology of the dual. And so then uh, it's tempting to ask the following questions, for example, uh, I mean, cohomology is some kind of graded algebra. So is it true that this uh, cohomology of X is the same as cohomology of X star? And the answer is by no means no. 
So we see that they have the same dimension. So, uh, so, uh, so kind of maybe warning. Homology of X is not isomorphic in general to homology of X star. And you can actually look at this example I talked about before, if you take, for example, uh, Y to be, let's say even quotient of C2 mod ZN, uh, so that there's a resolution and uh, you know, X is just the, it's minimal resolution, uh, which, and uh, then the dual is going to be T star of a projective space. And you can see that, uh, uh, well, if you consider the cohomology of this minimal uh, resolution, then its total dimension is the same as cohomology of projective space. But again, it's an exercise to see that the as algebras and or even as graded vector spaces, they're completely different. So, yeah, sure. yes, yeah. the number of fixed points on x and x star is the same. What about is there any known relation between weights in the representation in the tangent spaces? Well, this, this, this is a very good question. The answer is yes, but somehow, well, yes. I mean, there should be there should be bijection, which satisfies some properties. In particular, this properties involve this uh, weights, but somehow, mm, well, the answer is yes, but somehow it's not. See, the point is that uh, you have to form, you have to answer this, you have to formulate this properly because you see the torus which acts on X and the torus which acts on the star are completely different tori. So somehow you can't just say that uh, the weights are the same. Uh, but you have uh, you have more structure there. You have uh, uh, so you have this weights uh, in the tangent space, and also next you have some line bundles which are parameterized by uh, in integral points uh, uh, by uh, uh, by co weights of a different torus. And so, well, okay, let me. I mean, I don't have time okay. now to explain this, but but there is some statement we can formulate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but for example, here's a question. And uh, to this question, there's an answer which is called Hikita conjecture. Uh, how to read off the cohomology of X from Y star or X star or whatever, any, anything on the dual side. And this answer, I don't have time to explain. I mean, originally I was going to, but somehow it took longer than expected. Answers given by Hikita, so it's called Hikita conjecture. Now, uh, since I'm going to wrap up now, so let me just say that in principle, you can try to sort of, you can now go and ask a lot of other questions. So, so of course, you know, in the modern world where people talk about cohomology, they should uh, kind of immediate contention should be talk about, uh, should be to talk about mm, mm, not just cohomology, but say quantum cohomology or, uh, even uh, that's a more complicated notion that uh, you can also talk about something like quantum K theory. So there's a work in progress, let me just mention here, work in progress of Aganajic and Okwinkov, which only in very uh, uh, kind of, well, mathematically it's applicable to some very limited class of examples. So it's about Quiver varieties of type A, or maybe fine type A of quiver varieties of finite or a fine type A. So it uh, relates uh, quantum type A, yes. And that's, that's exactly, I mean, type A is important here because that, that's exactly what guarantees that the dual also has a resolution. So uh, quantum key theory of uh, X to quantum key theory. Well, quantum key theory is a complicated notion by itself. And uh, 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 so, and I don't have time to explain to quantum key theory of X dual. And funnily enough that even in these cases when somehow they know, I mean, the, 
the actual formulation of what they do is relatively easy if you believe that quant uh, you, that you know what quantum key theory is. But for example, I don't know how to deduce this original Hikita conjecture from this thing. So, uh, so, so I mean, in order to deduce the Hikita conjecture, you have to first of all go from K theory to cohomology, which is not a big deal. But what what, what is uh, much uh, worse is to go from quantum to to classical, and somehow it's kind of it's, it's compatible with duality on some complicated way. So I don't know how to deduce uh, uh, this Hikita conjecture from a Ganaji Shokunkov, but there should be some way. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that there are some, uh, 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 a lot of geometric questions you can ask uh, on one side and then they have some kind of answer on the other side, but this answer is typically not, uh, uh, it's, I mean, Sometimes it's relatively complicated, so, so, so it's not straightforward to formulate the answer, but more or less any kind of nice question I can ask about X is, uh, can be formulated about X star. Uh, it can be formulated in terms of X star and so on, or Y and Y star, but again, all the kind of, uh, most of non-trivial work is done in the case when you have some, when you have resolutions, although the formulations of the conjectures are uh, mostly in the case, they usually don't require resolution. Maybe the last thing I'm going to say, which will be kind of very brief is that, there's a categorical duality again, conjectural proven in some cases. And uh, this is about uh, categories of modules or some categories, of some nice modules, something like category O over quantizations. of y and y star. So uh, essentially, well, they say that if you define some nice uh, uh, pieces of these categories, which are some kind of analogs of category, which will become literally category O in the case when uh, this y and y star are important cones of some of the algebra in Slango's dual the algebra, so this is this is this is a work of uh, uh, many people, and so uh, so it's I think Braden, Likata, uh, Proudfoot, Webster. So uh, is that uh, well? Let me just say it again as a slogan. I'm not going to decipher it today. That's so they say that categories. Oh over quantizations, well, I will not write quantization for, let me write for Y and Y star are Kazoo dual. So again, for people who know what it means, then I'll just leave it here. And so Kazoo dual is something like equivalence of categories, but not quite. So it's, it's, something, it's something like equivalence of derived categories, but again, not quite, it's some, it's, uh, well, it's some kind of twisted notion of, uh, of equivalence of derived categories, but, um, uh, and so um, now let me, let me summarize by saying the following that uh, first you can formulate a lot of other relations between y and y star some of them require resolution some of them don't require resolutions and then uh, kind of the questions we can ask is uh, uh, how to prove them in interesting examples and again there's a extremely large zoo of examples when you know just this dual pairs and the second question is that given why, how to, well, let me form the question, but it will, it will be, first I will form it, it very badly and I'll explain why it's, why it's a bad formation. How to construct Y star. And uh, the point is that, uh, why is it, I mean, why is it a bad question? The bad question because uh, this, uh, this correspondence Y to Y star should not be anything like a functor. 
in other words, the idea is that if 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 if, if I'm just given y, I'm sorry, sorry, what's the question? Should not. Should ah should not yes okay thank you. Should not be anything like a functor. So uh, uh, and uh, the point is that if. Um, mm, if, you, if, if you're just given y as a variety, you should not be uh, able to define y star canonically. And this can be actually explained using physics because uh, 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 for example, uh, given y there might exist a lot of different uh quantum field theories even a lot of different gauge theories such that this y is equal to its higgs branch and then this coulomb branch which is y star will depend on on the theory And not on y, and this can be said mathematically sometimes. For, so, for example, I mean, for people who know what quiver varieties are, then it's uh, very common that the, that the same quiver varieties can be uh, uh, often obtained from different quiver data, from two different types of quiver data, from from two, from two different quivers. And then, when, when when you describe the dual, then the dual will depend not on y as a variety, but on how you write it as a quiver variety. So, uh, and mathematically, it's not even, it's not known. Uh, and by the way, if we go to, to this Aganaji Shinogunkov uh, conjecture that, uh, or work or theorem, I don't know uh, what's the status of it. Then, uh, so they talk about this uh, quantum K theory and the quantum K theory, the only defined for quiver varieties and for quiver varieties, it's, uh, it's attached canonically not to a variety, but to, uh, to, I mean, to quiver data. You have to sort of know how you write a variety as a quiver variety. So, uh, so uh, this, so this property of quantum K theory is kind of compatible with what I'm here saying here. So, uh, so you need some data, need just not something like, not not just a variety, but you need some data to um, some additional data to define the dual. So maybe let me mention that in the series of papers of myself with Finkelberg and Nakajima, what is done is uh, this is kind of done for if you want for in the physics language for gauge theories the idea is that uh what is done is the following so if you start with g which is a reductive group and v some representation of g then you can define y as the hamiltonian reduction of t star v by g and this is uh and this is the uh same as higgs branch of the Corresponding gauge theory, because gauge theory with gauge group G and matter V. Uh, gauge theory. And so what is done in this work is that we, de we define Y dual, which is the Coulomb branch of this theory, whatever that means. And I mean, there's some kind of rigorous mathematical contraction of the dual, which satisfies at least some of the above requirements. Some of the above uh, properties of duality. So there are kind of two types of questions. Let me just sum summarize this. That somehow, somehow when you know a dual pair proof, you know, some properties of the dog that if you want, I only formulated some very, very simple ones, but somehow there are more complicated ones, which I didn't formulate. And uh, and also uh, kind of you can formulate question two, maybe slightly more generally, just how to construct dual pairs. Uh, and uh, so this, uh, for example, our work with Hikilabar Nakajima gives you uh, a big list of dual pairs, which I attached the, just to arbitrary reductive group and it's an arbitrary representation. Okay, I, I, at least for today, I think I have to stop. So. If people want, I can continue uh, some other time just to and uh, uh, talk about more details here. But maybe it's just a good time to stop. So, cool.
Thank you. Any questions? Uh, no. Is is the is the is, uh, 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 relationship of this and the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the work of like. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're asking. So it's about this work of Bensvi Seklari. It's not as good. It's related to this. I don't know. I think it's. A, I think that work is more about four-dimensional gear theories, not about three-dimensional gear theories. So, I mean, I, I don't know how to how, how to relate it to, uh, 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 how to relate it to, to this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so. What I was originally going to talk about, I was originally going to talk about some kind of nice examples of this. I mean, I was going to explain this uh, Hikita conjecture, which uh, which is here. So how to how to how to read off cohomology of X in terms of in terms of the dual. It's it's actually pretty elementary, and then maybe uh, give you some nice examples of that. But I I don't have time to do this. Okay, uh, I I hope we can continue this. We'll discuss when next time or maybe with some break, but for sure, I think it would be good to, to continue and maybe do some elementary uh, examples just to explain some basic notation you gave. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't okay. know what, what could be more elementary than I did, but... Uh... No, I mean, you mentioned some properties for some basic things, but for example, I would like to, to understand, personally, I would like to understand how to prove the non-existence of resolution, what kind of well, okay, that, ab uh, abstractions. Frankly, I don't know on the spot how to do it, but, 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 but uh, I mean, uh, no, there, there are some tools, uh, I mean, there's even, in this business, there's even notion of non-commutative resolutions. For some of them, we can prove that they don't have a non-commutative simplex resolution. But, uh, but I mean, it's definitely not, I, you know, it's a mathematical statement that we don't have a simplectic resolution, but I have to, th this, frankly, on the spot, I don't know how to prove I have to prove No, no, I'm not going on spot, just what, what you ask, what is more elementary? It's not about elementary, it's about just understand what kind of tools one has. <clears throat> okay, any? Additional questions, comments? Um, I want to ask a question um, about, like, on uh, um, K theory, on uh, some of uh, your examples, there's an action of like toroidal algebra. Like, uh, does your, uh, does this mirror symmetry has some implications for s such kind of representations? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let me think for a second. For a second, if I, if if, the, if there is anything positive I can say, um, uh, well, again, it's, no. I mean, on the spot, I don't know. I mean, for example, this is the conjecture which I didn't formulate, which tells you how to co compute, how to express cohomology of this of the resolution in terms of the dual side. And of course, if your resolution is a quiver variety or at least some collection of quiver varieties, then on that thing, there is an action of some algebra. And then you can uh, try to see if you, uh, if you know how to, uh, if you know how to, uh, how to define the action on the same algebra on the dual side. And uh, the answer is I don't know. Uh, but, uh, uh, or at least I, I know I know how to do it in some examples, and actually this is how you prove. I mean, in some examples where this conjecture is proven, then you can actually really try to 
use the structure of it to, to prove he can the conjecture. But a priori, how to sort of relate one to the other is, I don't know. But again, I didn't describe what he can conjecture was. But, so, and uh, and then this Kanadish Okunkov statement, the story is really about quantum K theory. So on what really acts on quantum K theory, this is a more, this is a much more complicated question. And uh, again, uh, maybe, uh, First of all, it's probably also not a question to me. Maybe if you want, I mean, maybe we can get Andre to talk about this at some point. I think I think actually gave talk about this in Skoltiak several times, but uh, but this is work in progress, so somehow. Okay, uh, Sasha. Last time I mentioned that Andre is planning to to give a course of mini course of lectures. Probably your talks is, is a good warm up. Stuff. No, no, I mean the question. I mean the question is on uh, he's going to give a mini course on what? I mean, <laughs> I mean it can be on something like this, or it can maybe be something something else. But, but, uh, but anyhow. So, uh, uh, so coming back to Roma's question, then I don't know a good answer to this question. Let me say it like this. More questions. Then just thanks, speaker again, and uh, we'll continue in a week. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Спасибо.